Hey Vinyl Community, hope you are doing well. In this video, I wanna talk about some albums that I am responsible for degrading the quality of. A lot of times when we go and we buy records, we see records that have various imperfections for various different reasons. There might be ring wear, there might be seam splits, there might be corners that are bent, there might be records that are scratched up. And that is the fault of the previous owner, but we know as record collectors, we're very careful, we're very meticulous about the way that we handle and care for our records. And so even though we may buy it in a certain condition, we're certainly not gonna let it degrade any more than the condition already is at the time that we purchase it. However, because I at times am clumsy, irresponsible, just a plain klutz, an idiot at times. There are albums in my collection that I bought at a certain record grade, maybe a VG plus, maybe a near mint, but because of my carelessness, foolishness, uh, because I did not handle them properly, I personally am responsible for degrading the condition of my albums. Mm, I know, I can't help it, you know, and hopefully I'm not the only one, but I'm gonna show a couple of records that I screwed up and it's my fault that they're in worse condition than I bought them. So anyway, the first one that I wanna show is, this is Jethro Tull, Songs From The Wood. A great album, found this in what I would consider to be a VG Plus condition. Got it at the record store, I was so excited. However, when I got home, I had my hands full, whatever, I'm grabbing this. I had a couple other things that I was grabbing and I opened the door and it's one of these deals where the car door opens, but then it closes again very quickly. I hadn't opened it all the way that it would stay open. And so anyway, I had this album, opened the door and then boom, it came and it actually bent the cover, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little clearer here, but I've got a band in this corner. Was not like that when I bought it. It was not like that 20 minutes ago when I purchased it at the store, but because I was in a hurry, I was careless, damn it anyway, now I have degraded the value of this record. Not that I'm looking to sell it, but anyway, I am very meticulous about my record jackets and I screwed up. I messed up and I'm bummed about that one. This next one that I have, this is one that I bought online and it came in, I will say not the best, package not the best. There was a lot of tape, a lot of tape involved in not only uh, the cardboard container that it was in, I would say it was probably a bit overkill. And so when I was unwrapping the record, there was a lot of tape and the person who shipped it to me I think went overboard on the tape. And so I'm ripping and tearing, trying to get at the record. And I ended up, this is REM Reckoning, by the way. I ended up ripping, this was, there was a piece of tape on here and, you know, like a maniac in my haste to get the record open, peeled off a piece of this cover, which I am really bummed about because it's in pretty decent shape, but it was a lot in a lot better shape until I started uh, tearing open the box. So there's a lesson to be learned there. The one that probably breaks my heart the most, one of my favorite albums of all time, Jeff Buckley. And I did an episode about this, about how you uh, store your records and how you position your inner sleeve. Uh, I had this where... This inner sleeve, the record opened like this. I didn't have it positioned this way where the inner sleeve was closed. And so I took this record out one day to listen to it. Again, was just very enthusiastically. And then, whoa, the record went flying out of the inner sleeve and landed on the floor. And I've got a pretty sizable scratch now on this record, which I am very upset and bummed about. So now I make sure that the top of my record goes into the top here. So there's not a chance of that happening anymore. I'm going to have to replace this record now because you can hear it. There is very definitely, it pops every time the record rotates. So 
I am really bummed about that, but it's my own fault. Like I was careless and now I know better. I just wish it had been a cheaper album that I had gone ahead and ruined. Another mistake that I have made is a white album, trying to clean it and not knowing what the hell I was doing. So I found a copy of the white album. This is one that was a numbered copy. I've got a, I've got several copies, numbered copies, original pressings of the white album. This one had some ring wear, not ring wear, but it had, you know, as you know, if you've had a copy of the White Album, you tend to get some dark marks on here just over time with age and handling. There tend to be uh, some dirt and grime and stuff that accumulates on the White Album. And on this particular one, I had read somewhere that if you take a magic eraser and scrub on it, you can get some of the dirt off of it. True. Just don't be overly aggressive with it. If you, and I've done a video where I've shown um, how you clean a white album jacket properly with a magic eraser. You have to be very delicate about it and making sure you're not doing it too hard. Well, anyway, this one I scrubbed a little too hard, started to wear off some of the jacket. It's not like a terrible peel that happened on this, but it's certainly in worse condition than I had it. I wish I had been a little more patient and paid a little more attention to what I was doing. It's going to be hard to see on this video because the white album is white. It's very light. It doesn't show up very well on camera, but um, especially along here, along the spine, it is a little rougher and coarser some of the gloss has been worn down in my haste and my carelessness. So that is something that I had to learn the hard way on. This is a copy of Let It Bleed. And you're probably wondering, well, where is the sleeve? Well, this is going to involve a little bit of uh, history and explanation on my part, but I have struggled for a long time with insomnia and one of the doctors, sleep doctor that I had gone to prescribed me Ambien. And if you know anything about Ambien, Ambien is a sleep drug. It works very quickly and it puts you to sleep what you think is asleep very quickly. However, what it actually does is before it puts you to sleep, it induces amnesia. So you are not aware you may do things that you're not aware of before you actually fall asleep. And look it up online, Google it. There are people who have done some pretty crazy things on Ambien. People have gone out driving. People have um, eaten stuff that they don't remember eating. I mean, it's pretty crazy if you look uh, the effect that Ambien has on you. But just a word of the wise, when you take Ambien, go immediately to bed or something like this will happen. So basically what happened was I took the Ambien and do not remember anything that happened after that. But apparently what did happen while I was under the effects of Ambien is I actually, this is the Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed. I actually ate the sleeve for this record, like the entire jacket I ate. Uh, and I don't know how I did. Um, it's amazing to me that a human being could consume an entire record jacket. But again, I was under the influence of Ambien. Google it. Um, I woke up with a taste of cardboard in my mouth, just not feeling very well. My stomach was really upset. And the last record that I had listened to before I went to bed was the Rolling Stones' Let It Bleed. I woke up and I'm like, where's the jacket? And then it dawned on me, I must have eaten it. So sure enough, I ate the entire record sleeve of my very precious Rolling Stones album. And this especially is upsetting because it was, for all that I can tell, an original pressing of this. It had the London logo on it, and it was in great, fantastic shape. Must have tasted delicious. The only thing that I can think of is because it had a cake on the cover that looked delicious, maybe in my groggy state. Under the influence of the Ambien drug, I thought, well, it's a real cake or whatever. But yeah, so I ate the entire sleeve of my Rolling Stones Let It Bleed. 
Gonna have to find a replacement one of these days. Uh, hopefully I can, maybe even in the dollar bin, maybe there'll be a record that's really scratched up, but a sleeve that's in pretty decent condition. But nonetheless, kind of bummed about that because now I have an incomplete copy of uh, Let It Bleed. And I had to have my stomach pump. I mean, I don't want to go into all the details. It was not a pretty uh, story what happened after that. Uh, but nonetheless, what came up out of my stomach, we're not even going to go into. It was not a pretty sight, but it confirmed the fact that I had, in fact, eaten my record jacket of Let It Bleed. So anyway, beware. So that is my, uh, unfortunately, five instances where I degraded, devalued the condition of my own record. So anyway, maybe you've got stories that you want to share in the comment section. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just here. This is a cautionary tale. Be very careful. Don't let what happened to me happen to you. Take care.